Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. We began a new series this morning uh, entitled Wake Up Sleeper. So you should have some notes uh, there on their app. And if it's not there, we apologize. We've been having a long, long weekend. And I don't know about you, but Natalie and I were talking last night and we were sitting there. Next thing I knew, she goes, she goes, Marcus, you need to go to bed. It's like two o'clock. I'm like, oh, heck, I had to get up here pretty early. But um, Wake Up Sleeper is this idea. There are seasons in your life when the unthinkable happens. And tragedy strikes. Is it true or not? Stuff happens to all of us. In the world, you'll have tribulations. And we're left with the question, why? Why did this happen to me? Why did he leave? Why did my young boy die all of a sudden in a car accident? Those are tragedies that take place and we are left with that moment. Why does it hurt so much? And in that moment, hope many times is lost. The love in your heart, the dream that you had, all of a sudden has ceased and faith will drift away and you find yourself sitting right there, spiritually sleeping. You find yourself uh, in a contrast, in, in a predicament where you used to be alive and you used to know what to do to get yourself awakened up, but you find yourself just asleep, not knowing what to do. What do you do when your spiritual appetite has diminished and trusting in God is far from your lips? When do you do when it's so dark that you find yourself there all alone and your life is caving in on you? Wake up, sleeper. It's a series that will bring hope back to your heart. So we're going to be looking at that idea for the next four weeks, this whole month. Now, so this morning, the title of this morning's message is this, it's not dead. It's not dead. Amen. And the big idea is this, is that God still raises dead things back to life. Amen. And you might find yourself in a dead situation. You know, you might find yourself living with a dead beat. I don't know, but you might find yourself in a very difficult time in this season of your life. And maybe you got, you know, laid off or whatever because of the pandemic. But I want you to know that God still raises dead things back to life. And there's still hope for you uh, this morning. You know, everything in life, in the universe, it moves towards decay. It, It goes downward. It's disorder. That's called the law of entropy. Say entropy with me. The law of entropy. Basically, the, the, in, in English terms, cars rust. Food rots. Human beings live, get weak, then they die. That's the law of entropy. And the only way that can be stopped is if an outside energy comes and counteracts that, and all of a sudden it, 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 it stops. It, be, it, it stops like a refrigerator, for instance. Uh, if you uh, pull the plug from a refrigerator, the a law of entropy begins. Next thing you know, just keep it there. You, you know, go, go and do this experiment at home. <laughs> but if you plug that into a power source, all of a sudden it counteracts and the law of entropy stops in that moment. Do you understand that? Well, the same idea happens to us, not only in the physical, but also spiritually. In the garden, Adam and Eve was given a mandate to eat from, I mean, they were given everything except to eat from that tree, and that's exactly what took place. And if they were to eat from that tree, they would begin to die. And that's where the law of entropy began. They took a bite of that, not only it was an apple or whatever, definitely wasn't a tortilla, but it was something. And all of a sudden, entropy began in uh, their life. And it's a slow, gradual process. You know, sin, I heard this one preacher say, uh, it's not like something immediate happened or you could see something immediately or consequence immediately take place. But all of a sudden, it gradually got, you know, deeper and darker and darker in their life. It acted like a slow-acting poison. Nothing immediate, but over time, it introduced sickness, then resentment, then anger, then murder, and then betrayal, then denial. It goes like that. And the more we find ourselves doing things that are contrary to Scripture, the quicker we decay. Isn't that the truth? truth. A preacher once said, sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. And it happens in life. But I'm here to tell you that when those kind of things happen in your life and you find yourself in dark caves and the tomb is being sealed 
in your life, all of a sudden, here's what we can hope for, and this is why we celebrate Easter, is in moments like that, we still know that there is a, a resurrected king yes. that comes and counteracts that situation, and it can stop and desist. Amen? And you can bring, the, bring, bring it back to life again. But it's difficult for many of us to go through that. Think about Easter and the Easter story. Man, when that took place, when, when Jesus came in and he was resurrected, everybody was just in a dark place. Their faith was paralyzed. It was all in a, not only was his body in a cold, dark tomb, but so was the disciples' faith. Yeah. Many of them had left. Many of them went back to what they were once doing. And it was hard for them to see anything uh, different. They saw the stripes. They saw the beating. They saw how he was ripped up in his whole body. And even though they heard the promise from his own lips, even though they, they, they saw the miracles in his own life, they could, not, they could not reframe their thinking to say, he'll rise again in three days. Yeah. Because they, they only saw what what once was. Yeah. That's good. But on the third day, Something beautiful took place. Amen. Amen. And Jesus came and he interacted that situation in their life. And Peter's faith was restored. And the disciples' hope was alive. And resurrection, people were starting getting out of the tombs and being resurrected from the dead again. Only something, an outside energy can come in and counteract those situations. And I'm telling you that Jesus can do that in your life today. Amen. In the season of your life. Amen. I absolutely love Easter. By the way, I just want to say to Austin, thank you and your wife. Thank you so much. Look at that beautiful picture. Now, I didn't know if you wanted me to tell you it was you, but anyways, it, it's just a beautiful picture of, of, of a conqueror. Yeah. And it looks like, you know, you, you can't be called a conqueror unless you've got something to conquer. Come on. Come on. That makes sense? <laughs> you, you, you can't be called an overcomer unless you have something to overcome. Amen. Amen. And so you, know, you want to know why the troubles and the stuff happen in your life today? All it is is faith practice. It's just helping you reframe your thinking and, and, and fight the good fight of faith because God can still help you and resurrect the things that are going on in your life. And you can make it through. You can make it through. Man, you guys are good today. Get your handkerchiefs out. Amen. Amen. Now, when I think about Easter, I have different images. I absolutely love Easter. It brings a big smile to my face. I'm l looking at the sun come out. Now, this morning I was a little bit off because I'm like, I slept like two hours. <laughs> but then I see the sunrise and I see the people coming in and I see the pancakes being cooked. I'm like, yes, it's Easter. <laughs> and it's so powerful, you know? But in your life and in my life, some, you know, I, I think about the hope and the expectation that's in my heart. Because I've been in that dark cave. I've been that dead person. I've almost died several times. And I probably should have been dead many times in my life. But Jesus came that one Saturday morning and counteracted that situation in my life. And all of a sudden, I went from death to life. From the grave to just a beautiful place in my Lord. Amen. And I love that. So I was thinking about the different um, images that would come to my mind, just to kind of give you a, a feeling of what I'm thinking about. And I know that you'll know what I'm talking about, but let me, just, let me just try to picture a few things. For instance, let's just say it's your wedding day. And in your wedding day, man, it, it should have been a beautiful day, a sunny day, but all of a sudden, dark clouds come in and it's starting to pour and it's starting to rain. And the bride is just like, oh my God, I can't believe this. I shouldn't marry him. <laughs> And then an hour or 30 minutes before the wedding starts, the sun comes out. And the feeling is like, yes, right? That's what Easter feels like to me. It's like, yes. I was overwhelmed with darkness. I've gone through some dark times in my life, but the light has come. Amen. And the light is still here. I think about the time when I go to the summit and, and, and I climb with Joel. It's another image that I have is we were climbing up Machu Picchu and halfway through there, I'm all, I'm all jacked up. I'm just like, I'm hurting. And there's no way I could make it two more days. It took us four days to get to the top. And you're dragging yourself and all of a sudden you see, oh, there it is right there. And that morning, we got up at four or five in the morning, and we went through that little window, and the sun came through there, and we saw the whole Inca Trail, the whole thing, the, the city that was up there. And it was like, oh my God, I can't believe I made it. 
And then we go into that place and we see these people all around us. Like, where did, I never saw those people pass us up. Well, they got up there on a the bus. <laughs> and they were like, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. I'm like, you have no idea what this looks like. <laughs> from, this, from this perspective, it's beautiful. Amen. Walking back home with no toes, nails. And I'm like, it's just, that, just the joy of just making it. Right? Crow knows what I'm talking about. The crows know. You know, the, 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 the first kiss is another idea. Uh, that your, your girlfriend finally gave you that first kiss after denying you 17 times. You're like, oh yeah. She loves me. I'm going to marry her. Or the smile on that kid's face that we saw on Saturday morning as they're on their way out and all of a sudden their name's called out and they get the bike. And you see them, it's just like, oh yeah. I did something. That's the beauty. That's the image. When I think about Easter, I think about the joy of that. Or the revelation that comes. And the Bible hope and the expectation that comes. When you face tragedy and you've lost to someone that you loved. And it hurts so bad. And you begin to read scripture or a song comes. And all of a sudden revelation comes like, I'm going to see them again. I'm going to be reunited with them. It's just the joy and the smile that comes like, Grandma, I'll see you again. Grandpa, I'll see you again. And we're going to have such a fun time. We're going to go fishing. We're going to do something. Amen. Just the beauty of that. It's so beautiful. It's experiencing forgiveness when you know you didn't, have, you didn't deserve to be forgiven. Amen. It's the power of the mother of Jesus Christ himself when after the third day he arose and they met together and embraced. The beauty of that. That's what the resurrection means to me. That's what Easter uh, means to me. It's a new beginning, a fresh start, a resurrected hope, a new opportunity, a second chance, a stepping into the new door when the other door has closed. When I looked at Easter, I didn't even know what Easter meant. I'm like, what does the Easter mean? So I Googled it. And you know, Easter means the season of growing sun or the season of a new birth. And in Latin, I don't know how these... Latin guys got this, but it means white week. I'm like, why not Mexican week? But it means white week, but it's taken from the white robes of those who have been newly baptized. All things are passed away. All things have become new. That's what Easter is. All things are passed away. All things have become new. But sometimes, sometimes in our lives, the only way to experience a resurrection is you have to face death. It's supposed to be good news, isn't it? Yeah. But the only way you can feel the power of a resurrection is to know that you've come face to face with death in life. And I don't know about you, but death is a tricky thing. Death gives you perspective like no other. Death is like a mirror. It's like a rearview mirror that helps you understand the beautiful priorities that all of a sudden your priorities just come up when you, when you face death. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> and so this morning, what I want to do is I want to take a passage of scripture, the, the, morning, the passage from Mark 16th. I'll use a passion translation. I just want to read the Easter story with you and then make some thoughts, make some comments, and then let you guys go home and eat some more pancakes. <laughs> is that okay? At the end, we'll receive our Easter offering. But what you'll see in this story is something that we experience. And, 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 it's, and it's so familiar to us that if you're not careful, you'll read through the passage and you'll miss it. And I want to just highlight it and not keep you there, but bring you hope of how we need to face these moments when we hear news like this. Is that okay? Mark 16, on the first day of the week, as the Sabbath was ending, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jacob, and Salome made their way to the tomb. You notice that it's always the women, isn't it? Thank you, ladies. Y'all messed it up in the first place. And, no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, let me start over. On the first day of the week, 12 men came to the Sabbath. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jacob, Salome, made their way to the tomb. It was very early in the morning as the first streaks of light were beginning to be seen in the sky. I'll just read it from here. They purchased the aromatic embalming spices so that they might anoint his, be 
his body. And they had been asking one another, who can roll the, away the heavy stone for us from the entrance of the troom? We have no men here. <laughs> Just thought of that. But when they arrived, they discovered that the very large stone had been sealed and the tomb was already rolled away. And they stepped into the tomb and they saw a young man sitting at the right, uh, dressed in long white robe. And the women were startled and amazed. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I know that you are here looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen victoriously. He says, look, see the place where he, they laid him. Run and tell the disciples, even Peter, that he is risen. He has gone ahead. I love and Peter. Isn't that powerful? He knew that he had just denied him. The rooster had crowed Amen. three times. Amen. And he's saying, go tell the disciples, make sure Peter knows this. Yes. Because I'm going to restore him. Amen. And when you think that you've denied the Lord, you've done something in your life that's so bad that you don't deserve his forgiveness, I'm telling you, and Joseph, Amen. and Denise, Amen. and Danny, Amen. make sure he wants you to know today, and you, you're forgiven, my friend. Amen. You're forgiven. You're worth. You're worth it. Where was I at? Run and tell the disciples, even Peter, that he is risen. He has gone ahead of you into Galilee, and you'll see him there just like he told you. And they staggered out of the tomb, awestruck, with their minds swirling. And they ran to tell the disciples, but they were so afraid and deep in wonder that they said nothing to anyone. They were still paralyzed. They're like, here they are, these women telling stories again. It's impossible. That couldn't have happened. I just seen him bleed. I just seen him breathe his last. I just saw them lay in that tomb. I just saw the, the tomb being sealed. It's impossible for that to happen. It's impossible to have a better marriage. It's impossible to, to, to come out of this dark place in our lives. It's impossible for my child to ever come back from that addiction and that habit and that place that he's been or she's been in life. This is my seventh divorce. I don't want another child. The one that I had is gone now. Does that make sense? Yes. And they staggered out of the tomb, awestruck with their minds swirling. They ran to the tell disciples, but they were so afraid and deep in wonder that they said nothing to anyone. And early on the first day of the week, after rising from the dead, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene from whom he had cast out seven demons. Isn't that powerful? The first person he goes to minister to or to, to, to uh, what do you call it, reveal the resurrection body of himself was to a woman who was, I mean, why not a princess? Why not someone in the palace? Why not someone who really, you know, had it all together? No, he goes to an individual who had seven demons cast out of her. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So it doesn't matter how low you think of yourself and how bad you think you've done things in life, I want you to know he'll go straight to you Amen. just to manifest his love for you and raise those things. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Where am I at? Early? After. After. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to do it right here. I got to keep doing this right here. <laughs> After she had seen Jesus, she ran to tell the disciples who were emotionally devastated and weeping. Excitedly, Mary told them, he's alive and I've seen him. But even after hearing this, they didn't believe her. After this, Jesus appears to the two disciples who were on their way to another village, appearing in the form that they didn't recognize. They went back to Jerusalem to tell the rest of the disciples, but they didn't believe either. They didn't believe it was true. Then Jesus appears before the 11 apostles as they were eating a meal. And he corrects them for having such hard, unbelieving hearts because they did not believe those who saw him after his resurrection. And he goes into that room and he says, go into all the world and preach this gospel and this wonderful news of the gospel to the entire human race. Whoever believes in this good news and is baptized will be saved. And whoever does not believe the good news will be condemned. And these miracle signs will accompany those who believe. They'll drive out demons in the power of my name. They will speak in tongues. It's in the Bible. They will supernaturally protect it from snakes and from drinking anything poisonous. And they will lay hands on the sick and heal them. Amen. So this morning I brought some snakes. I'm just kidding. 
And another saying, the very last, he says this, Jesus was, and then after these sayings, notice this, this is the beauty of, the, of that morning. Jesus was, imagine yourself being there and hearing this message. Jesus was lifted up into the heavens and sat down at the place of honor at the right hand of God. And the apostles went about announcing the good news to everywhere. And the Lord himself was consistently working with them, validating the message they preached with miracle signs that accompanied all of them. Amen. Amen. What you see in these passages are four different classes, four different individuals who heard about Jesus being resurrected. And in every single one of those cases, it was easier for them to believe that death had won rather than to believe that God was able to be raised up from the dead. To believe that Friday was the end, to believe that the cross was final, to believe that when tragedy struck and what they saw with their eyes and what they felt in their soul would never, nothing, nothing, it would, it could come back to life again. It was easier for, to believe that. And for our lives, it's the same way. So many times we identify so well with the hurt and the pain and the trouble and the darkness that we can't never see the new. Yeah. When he goes and um, goes in front of Mary, she sees him face to face, but she didn't recognize him because Mary was looking for what was rather than what is. Good, Pastor, amen. And many times in our lives, that's exactly what happens is the promise has failed us and we've hurt and we're in that dark place. And the, 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 the promise and the dream that we have for our future, the enemy comes to forever seal that dream in a tomb and close it. And let the law of entropy continue. And many people find themselves stuck in those places in life. And I pray this morning that you will understand that there's an outside source and there's an outside energy and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. And he wants to come Amen. and counteract your situation so that you can believe again. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Don't get to that place. The darkness, the beatings in life will strip you. The darkness in those moments in life, they'll nail you. They'll try to condemn you. And they'll paralyze you from believing in the resurrection. And that's exactly the enemy's scheme. It's to keep your heart from believing and your faith from growing. But good news, Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. On the third day, he arose again, and, and he still brings dead things back Woo. to life. Amen? Amen? Now listen, I have several mentors, and I, I listen to them when they speak to them most of the time. <laughs> Sometimes I don't like what they tell me. But there's a mentor that I just want to share this last passage with you, and I'll close the service with this. There's a mentor by the name of the Apostle Paul. And he has this in 2 Corinthians. And it goes something like this. If anyone knew the heartache and the hurt and the distresses of life, the dark things in life, if anyone knew and believed in the power of the resurrection, even though you were facing tragedy, it was the Apostle Paul. And this is what he says to all of us. If we ever find ourselves in a situation or you know individuals who have faced those moments in life, here's what you can give them, hope to believe, to get back up. He goes here in 1 Corinthians 8, he goes, For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in western Turkey. There's trouble there, right? Anybody ever face trouble? Yes, sir. It goes, all of the hardships that we passed through, it crushed us beyond our ability to endure. You ever been crushed so heavy that you, have, you can't see anymore? You're under the dirt. And we were so completely overwhelmed that we were able to give up entirely. It felt like we had a death sentence written upon our hearts and we still feel it to this day. Anybody ever been there? It, what does it teach us? Here's what it happens. Here's what it taught the Apostle Paul. And here's what he's telling us as he's coaching us. He's saying, when you find yourself, when you feel absolutely overwhelmed, there's a lesson to learn. It teaches us that we have to lose all faith in ourselves and to place all of our trust in the God who raises the dead. Amen. 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 Now, I'm not saying that's easy to do, but I'm telling you that's the thing to do. Because that's what's written in scripture. Amen. To believe and to trust and to have faith. When you don't understand, trust and have faith. Right. 
Why? Because he delivered us from so great a death. He does deliver us in whom we trust and he will still deliver us. Amen. You also helping us together in prayer for us. Amen. And I love that. And I can literally, you know, talk about that the, at the very end because he didn't do it alone. He did it with other individuals who were there connected with him and praying for them and helping them out of those moments in life. But the point is this, don't identify more with your pain than the promise of a resurrection. Amen. He still raises things to life. So what do you do? I'm going to encourage you this Easter and today as you, as you ha hang out with all those crazy family members and you're getting cascarones on your head and you're getting upset because they're hitting you harder and harder, <laughs> um, I want to encourage you to expect something greater. I want you to encourage you to experience something superior. Have faith in the one who is higher than all. He's mightier than all. He's stronger than all. He's, he's, he's bigger than anything you'll ever face. Amen? Amen. Amen? Let me just close with this story. Denise, you can come on up. Or the band, you can come on up. When I was a kid, I was, um, you know, pretty... I used to do crazy little things, right? Jump off houses to get in, in the club, in, in the gangs. Not gangs like street fighting gangs, but just little kid gangs. We called it the Weinert Gang. Um, and I, but, I, but it wasn't like that in the beginning. Now, I went to elementary school. I was a, a real shy person. But I, I, was, I was active, but I, I, didn't, I, didn't, you know, I didn't want to talk. I didn't want to, I, I didn't want to say a lot of things. And I'm, I'm still kind of like that. I don't know why you put me here to preach, but still. I love the monkey bars. I always loved exercising and stuff like that. Can't you tell? And so I would, I would climb up on, I remember going to the monkey bars and I would, get, that's, that's just an image because it's so real, but I would, I would step up on those monkey bars and I'd get up on, on, on that first bar, you know, and feel that cold steel. It says, you, you know, you're supposed to take your feet off of that thing and I just couldn't take my feet off of it. And I finally would take my feet off and I'm hanging there and I couldn't reach that next one. I mean, I could reach it, but it, I was too afraid to reach it. So you ever, you ever had your kids just hang in there? <laughs> I feel bad for my daughter, my youngest daughter, because I, I took her to the elementary school when she was a little kid. And I said, baby, you can do this. You can do this. Go. So she gets on the monkey bars, and she tries to do it, and bam, she falls flat on her. It was, it was rough. <laughs> so I remember I would do that, and the first time, then I would just back up and go back down the stairs. And I would come back, and I would try to get the courage to do it again. And I remember getting on that thing and I finally just let go and I grabbed to the next one. And then I let go of my feet because I was still holding on to my feet to the ladder. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I'm stretched out. And I finally got the courage to let go and grab the other one. And then it just kept on going. My point is this. If you want to move forward in your life, there comes a time you might be stretched out. You might be in fear. But there comes a point in time where you have to let go. Let go so that you can get to the place where God wants you to, to be. And some of us are stuck in a place that we need to get unstuck. And the only thing that's going to stop the law of entropy is a counteraction by Jesus Christ himself, if you allow him. So every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here this morning... And you came to the service because somebody invited you and they said we had lunch here. I don't know why you're here, but I know that God has a purpose and a reason for you to be here. Maybe today is the day that you let go of yourself. That you let go of the way that you're living. And put your faith in Christ. Natalie and I did that in the darkest moment of our lives. We got on our knees and we said a prayer a prayer of repentance, a prayer to let go and to put God at the center of our lives. And I would love to pray that prayer with you this morning on Easter 2021. If you'd like, to, if you'd like for me to include you in that prayer and make Christ the Lord of your life, I want you to lift up your hand real quick because I just want to pray with you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All over this place, there's hands going up. Thank you. Pray this with me. Mean it with your heart. Heavenly Father, this Easter, I'm going to let go, and I'm going to let you be Lord of my life. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m., or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. 
Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.